don't want to get anybody injured trying to do so. And so the current configuration, you see a, a eight inch white line, and that's to kind of alleviate some of that weaving to get further down downstream, and then the weaving can occur. So we'll next item is the approval of the minutes for February 17th. Do I have any additions, corrections? A motion by Mitchoff, a second by Romick. Any opposition? Seeing none, we'll move on to consent calendar. Anyone wishing to pull any item on the consent calendar? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Mala, are you looking at me like I have to do a vote? This, I have seen it. Okay. Not roll call, though, right? All those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? No abstentions. Consent, <laughs> consent calendar items are generally routine in nature and acted upon with a single motion. Anyone from the authority wishing to pull it? Anyone? Any item? Anyone from staff? Anyone from the audience? No cards? A motion, Romick, second, Pierce. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? No abstentions? That's what you get for moving things right along. Okay, we have uh, one item of regular agenda items, 4A.15. Uh, it's about the mid year budget and congestion management authority and CCTA. Resolution 15-18A, Revision 1, Brian Keller. You're going to tell us all about it. Yes, I am, and good evening. Um, we're here, obviously, to present the mid-year budget adjustments. Uh, we delivered this to the APC on the 3rd. Um, so the first slide. It's a pretty slide. technical difficulties tonight. As part of the handouts, oops, excuse me, as part of the handouts tonight, we did put the slides on your desk as well. So on page one, or the first, the second uh, box that we have here is a summary that goes through, here we go, thank you, is the Sales tax revenues, federal, state, and local revenues, the grants that we receive for the bulk of the construction projects. We also do get some uh, additional grants for the CMA functions um, that we have investments and miscellaneous income, bond proceeds that we use to fund the capital projects, other sources as well. We'll go over all of the revenue sources in the next few slides. And then we have the uses of the expenditures for the projects, programs, planning, and administration sections. Um, as you can see, we have a balanced budget with the inflow of the bond proceeds and other sources. The next slide is the sales tax revenues. Um, in 2013, we had about 75 million. Our projection for the 2016 is 82.4 million. Um, we've received about 52.5% of the sales tax revenue for the year after six months. Um, we're going to leave the projection at $82.4 million just to make sure that we don't have any um, overstatements on our sales tax revenue. This slide here is a little different than what we gave at the APC. It's got the same categories, but what I've done is updated it for the six months of information that we've received. Um, on the left-hand side, you can see the the top 15 categories, if you count them, there's only nine, but there's 15 categories out of the 100 that are rolled into those different nine groups. Um, as you can see right off the top, we have the gas tax that year over year for the July through December period, we have a decrease of about 571,000 in the gas tax, which is offset by retail, new auto, and restaurants that's doing very well. Um, so year to date compared to the prior fiscal or prior six months in 2014-15 is up about 6.2 percent. This slide here covers the what's received by CCTA uh, as far as federal grants and state and local revenues as well compared to the sales tax. Um, as you can see in 2014 we had a large $79 million inflow, which was a result of the Caldecott and work on Highway 4. And you can see that Highway 4 has continued over into 2015 with a little of the Caldecott is in there as well. And our proposed uh, 2016 is about $60 million. Um, 
In here, this breaks down the federal grants and the state and local contributions as well. Um, you can see that the RM2 money has increased about 9.2 million. Um, we have BATA funds that have increased about 4.2 million, and we have some decreases in the ECRA fund money, which is related to the Highway 4, um, which is a decrease about 1.5 million. One thing we like to do is let you know that just because we have increases and decreases, it's not because we've lost any any funding, all of the funding sources when we come to you with the capital projects are already in place. When we start the program and during the budgeting process, it's a timing of during that 12, 12 months, we try and pinpoint how much money we're gonna be spending and the reimbursements we're gonna be getting on each of these programs. This schedule here is how we use the bond proceeds, and I also like to go through the, the columns here. The left-hand column lists the CIP projects that we have, and then we have the $53.2 million that we're receiving and how they're dispersed for these several projects there. Um, the RM2 funding, which is about $24.9 million, you can see the bulk of it is going to the SR4 East Widening category, which is the SR4 160, uh, oh, no, no, that's bad. I'm sorry. That's the uh, EBART rail in projects there. Um, as we come down to the, the bottom right-hand side, you have about the $80.5 million. That's what's projected that's going to be used of the bond proceeds that we issued this year. And so we had about $35 million left over from the 2012 that we used earlier on in this fiscal year. This here is a distribution of the sales tax revenue. Um, as you can see the disbursement, we have the capital projects that gets about 42.5% of the revenue and it goes all the way down to administration that gets about 1% of the money. Um, the other sources that was on the first uh, worksheet that we showed you is the sales tax revenue that we receive goes into the individual accounts set aside for the, each one of these projects and programs. And as we accrue funds or receive the funds in prior fiscal years, it isn't until the projects come to fruition that we start to spending the money. So therefore, sometimes we'll have to dip into the reserves. Um, these reserves aren't like your, your reserves that you have at the cities. This is money that's earmarked particularly for each one of these categories. Um, and you can see that we're going to use about 12 if you look at the Measure J programs up top and with Measure C on the bottom is about six, so we're using about $12 million. Go back, please. <laughs> go ahead, Dave. There we go. I, I just didn't understand what you just said. And, Sorry. Could, just say what you just said, but sort of be a little more explanatory. That was a little too The quick. program reserved on the far right-hand column is the current year revenues versus the current year expenditures that we have in there. The negative numbers that we show in there is the use of prior year revenues that have been set aside for each one of those individual projects and programs. Um, and then you said something about Measure J and Measure C. And I didn't yeah, it says that. Measure C, that's right. Measure C is on the bottom. Um, as, you, as you know, we're stopped receiving money on Measure C um, back in night Back in 2009, um, we do have some projects that are still continuing to use the, the final resources that are set aside in Measure C, um, and that's about $6.1 million. The main project in there is the 680 project. So sorry, everything, sorry about that. everything above that very bottom line is Measure J, and then when you said you combine the two, it's $12.6 million. You're just adding those the 6.5 and the 6.1. Got it. Okay, yes. thank you. Okay, Karen, you still, you're good? Okay. The question I have is do we have somewhere where how much money is left in Measure C? You said we no, we no longer receive any, so if we, but we're still expending. So that those are the reserves that there's money that came in. I, I get. Please explain it because I'm not doing a good job of it. As we as we collect revenue over the years, Measure C, for example, um, was was so we've collected. I don't know the total dollar amount on that, but. At the end of 2015, when we did the financials, there was roughly about 20, 25 million dollars of Measure C funds that were still set aside, just like as we do in the Measure J strategic plan that was on the uh, the calendar for tonight. It outlines where each of those dollars is going to go. So we it, still have projects that need to be funded under Measure C. Yes. So there are earmarks for 
as for all of that money that's sitting there. Okay, thank you. Continue. The proposed expenditures for all of the projects and programs is about $236.2 million. Um, this, this slide will break down the individual projects for the Measure J projects only. Um, as you can see, the change between the original fiscal year 2015 of $141 million compared to the mid-year adjustments we made is about $133 million. There's a decrease of about $7.8 million. Um, the the BART, East, the rail extension, you can see is probably the biggest one with the decrease. The timing and working with BART is uh, sometimes trying to, to, get, to get the numbers from them and getting receipts for the invoices for those things is hard to do a year in advance. So we do our best to make the projections and sometimes during the year we need to make accommodations. Um, as you can see, the I-80 corridor is moving along a lot faster than we had originally anticipated last year. So we've added a little bit more of uh, expenditures in that category as well. As we look at the proposed expenditures for administration, programs, and planning, the administration's budget is about $2.2 million. Um, the salaries and benefits are going to be about 700000 which represents uh, 0.86 of the 1% limitation established by Measure J. The program's budget is being decreased at the mid-year budget for $3.7 million. Um, transportations for livable community projects decreased about $1.8 million. Sub-regional transportations decreased $2.1 million to reflect payments that we made in fiscal year 2015. The planning budget has increased about $600,000. Uh, $2.1 million is set aside for the public outreach for the tax expenditure plan. $2.4 million for CMA and CMP support. Um, the projects include the West Contra Costa High Capacity Study and Express Buddy Bus Study. Um, several contracts and studies are partially funded by grant revenues. The debt service is being reduced by $3.5 million. Uh, when we anticipated going to market, um, when we did the budget last year, we anticipated making a debt service payment in September, but we didn't issue bonds until October. So therefore, there's the decrease of $3.5 million of an interest payment in there. Um, our draw on the bond proceeds for the fiscal year is going to be about $80.5 million. Um, that concludes our major budget update. Okay, questions of Brian and staff, Member uh, Mitchoff. Brian, thank you. Um, I'm going to go back to that Measure C money. You said there was $25 million in reserves, give or take. Have we? The, my concern is, as we're getting ready to go out for another tax measure, if there are still projects, how many projects need to be funded? Because I'm concerned that one of the, and, and this may not be a question for you, uh, maybe just to my colleagues, that the argument would be, well, you still have money left over that you haven't spent yet, and would say, we'll say, well, it is designated for X, Y, and Z project. Well, yeah, but if you didn't get it done in Measure C, you stopped collecting money. Now you want more money. I'm just, I'm hoping that that's been spent way, way down, or. That's my question. Where are we with Measure I C? I think Yasham's going to answer that. I'm, I'm going to try to help answer the, your question. It's a very good question. Measure C, as you know, expired in 2009. So we're not collecting any more revenues. However, the projects that are programmed in the 2011 strategic plan, which is the last strategic plan we approved, are still going on. There is about four or five projects including the 684 interchange, which has the biggest chunk of money left, uh, Highway 4 widening, as well as few smaller city projects. There is one in Danville, one in Concord. And we're wrapping them up. I think uh, in Ju June or July of this year, we're planned to come to you to uh, basically talk about how we close out Measure C. And right now, these monies are not really reserves. They're programmed for the project. They're just not yet been expended. So it's programmed funding for project. They just have not expended their full funding. And I get seat. that. So what you're saying is hopefully in the next several months, you'll come back. You're using the term close it out. I'm going to use the term roll it over 
into current so that, and I get that there's still a few little projects, but you're right, Highway 684 uh, isn't going to get done in two months. Uh, and so uh, I just want to make it as, cl as clean as possible. So thank you very much. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Motion from our APC brethren? I've moved. We adopt the uh, amendments to the budget. Okay, we have a motion tats and second but. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? Seeing none, there was no there was no planning committee meeting, so we don't have anything out on there. Uh, letter from City of San Juan 5.1, any comments? It's information only. 5.2 is information only. 5.3, information. Oh, Mr. Tatson, you have a light on. Oh, sorry. 6.1, we're on to Associated Committee reports from TransPAC. Any comments? Seeing none. TransPlan, SWAT, no. West County, no. Chair comments and reports, I've already made too many. Commissioner comments, I see any lights. Seeing no comments. Executive staff comments, you've got a big report here. Thank you. Really, I was Thank impressed you, with that third page. Go ahead. Thank you, Chair Hudson and Commissioners. I just wanted to make a couple of comments. The first one is Interstate 80 San Pablo Dam Road interchange. We had our first partnering meeting. We met with Brosimer and Wall and their subcontractors. I wanted to recognize Ivan Ramirez and Chris Cole. They've done a great job of analyzing the schedule and making sure that we're going to deliver this project before early summer. Hopefully it'll be, Ivan, is that this calendar year, hopefully? Is that a goal? Chris? This, this goal, this, this calendar year. So hopefully a season early. So we're doing everything we can to do that. So we're, we're trying to make sure that we have a great conversation with, with the contractor. We cut a ribbon, a small ribbon, out in the eastern part of Contra Costa, State Route 4, State Route 160. Well, well attended, and congratulations to all. We gave a ceremonial check back to MTC of a million dollars. Chris Cole, since Ivan's not here, assures me that we're going to have a million dollars in savings, correct? <laughs> I mean, we shouldn't cash that check quite yet. Huh? And then we've had a series of meetings. Lindsay and I went to Sacramento on the train. We took the Capitol Corridor. It was great, on time. And um, talked to various folks, uh, staffers of various committees, Google and uh, the TechNet company or the TechNet Association about Assembly Bill 1592, no steering wheel, no brake pedal, no operator. And so there's some concern about that. But we, we try to kind of illustrate these two points. Number one is the reason why we're trying to exempt the Concord Naval Weapons Station and Bishop Ranches, if you invested in your dollars in making improvements out at the weapons station or Gomentum Station, You'd want to make sure that those investments are preserved into the future so that you can continue testing. So as the weapon station turns over to the city of Concord, it comes under the jurisdiction of the Department of Motor Vehicles. So that's the first item. And the second is over at um, Bishop Branch, where we want to kind of roll these things out on a test basis. In order to go from parking lot to parking lot, you're going to have to cross the city street. So it's much like there's a golf course up near Gray Eagle where you have to take a golf cart across the state highway. That has now special legislation because CHP was ticketing the golfers as they crossed because it's illegal to cross a, a state highway swing. on a um, golf cart. So we're trying to do the same thing. So hopefully we'll move the, that legislation forward. And that's my report. If anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Um, I do have one question. Sure. Can we all get the little pins from the, the, the 4 um, 160? Because some of our friends are getting to wear them, but we. Thank you very much. Okay. The answer to that question is yes. <laughs> the pen portion of the report is over. Moving on to calendars. <laughs> Any comments or questions on 8182? We will move to closed session. Public employee performance evaluation pursuant to government code 54957. The title is the executive director who I think has to catch a plane, and a conference with labor negotiators pursuant to government code 54957.6, the agency designated representative, Dave Hudson, unrepresented employers, the executive director, Randy Iwasaki. So do, wait, 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 wait. Do we want to go over to that room and keep the people here or kick them out? No, kick them out. I'm sorry, you're out. Come back in a couple minutes.
Okay, we will uh, reconvene to open session. The uh, authority met, or board of directors met public em in closed session for public employee performance evaluation pursuant to government code 54957. No action was taken. We met uh, in closed session conference with labor, labor negotiators pursuant to government code 54957.6. No action was taken. And we are adjourned to our next meeting uh, Wednesday, March 23rd at 6 p.m. And the TEP Transportation Expenditure Plan meeting will begin at the call of the chair, I'm guessing, about five minutes. Sound about right? Say right about now. Okay, right about now. You want to switch? Well, I'd like to uh, welcome everyone to the, the special meeting of the Transportation Authority regarding the Transportation Expenditure Plan. Sure.